To be interviewed for this afternoon, Your Honors, is a Court of Appeals Associate Justice Jose C. Reyes, Jr. Good Justice afternoon, Reyes. Justice Reyes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Please settle yourself, and then we'll start my request, Attorney Cayosa. Thank you, uh, Justice Gutierrez. Good afternoon, uh, Justice Reyes. Good afternoon, Your Honor. We have extensively interviewed you um, three times in the past, in 2011, 2012, and 2014, all for the same position. And so I just have have a few questions now. Um, quite recently, uh, your name was in the newspapers with respect to a, a case involving an LGU official. And um, there were allegations made um, that would affect your integrity as a jurist. Um, what did you learn from that experience? I'm, I need not go into the details of uh, the case, but uh, um, perhaps uh, you could shed some light on how, um, the situation that you um, were in and how you managed to overcome the situation. Uh, good afternoon, Mom. Are you referring to the Makati incident? Okay, uh, that was uh, what had happened last year, and uh, a uh, petition for certiorari was uh, filed by uh, uh, then incumbent mayor uh, Jun Jun Binai, uh, questioning the uh, the preventive suspension order against him issued by the uh, uh, office of the ombudsman and uh, as a prayer uh, he requested for the issue ones of a temporary restraining order and then uh, a, a writ of preliminary injunction and uh, the 6th Division at the time, after uh, a uh, uh, deliberation, because the division is a collegial body, um, we came out after a judicious uh, evaluation, a meticulous one and impartial. Uh, we, the division, issued a temporary restraining order and uh, the basis the main basis of our uh, actually after the issuance of the TRO we subsequently issued after the necessary hearing before the issuance of the preliminary injunction now these two uh, injunctive uh, reliefs were based on uh, at that time the existing uh, condonation doctrine and uh, thereafter after the issuance of this uh, injunctive reliefs uh, the office of the ombudsman uh, went up to the Supreme Court to question the two injunctive the, the two resolutions which uh, were issued and uh, soon thereafter, sometime November uh, 10, 2015, the Supreme Court uh, affirmed the two orders that we issued. And these are the two the orders granting the TRO and the order uh, granting the writ of preliminary injunction. And uh, the Supreme Court stated that uh, the two resolutions which directed the issuance of the injunctive reliefs were all hinged or based on cases which, enunci which enunciated the uh, condemnation uh, doctrine. And further, the Supreme Court said that uh, by, by merely relying on, uh, on uh, existing precedents, uh, um, 
on the condemnation doctrine the Court of Appeals, particularly the 6th Division where I belong, and by the way, I was the ponente of the case. The Court of Appeals uh, did not act with grave abuse of discretion. And uh, uh, quite uh, empathically, the Supreme Court, through the ponentia of Justice uh, Stella Berabe, stated that the writ of preliminary injunction issued against the preventive suspension order of the Ombudsman was correctly issued. So that was the ruling. And uh, just just to go back a little bit, so that was the ruling of the Supreme Court, and somehow uh, it effectively vindicated us, meaning vindicated the Court of Appeals. And just just to go back a little bit, you know, when 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 uh, the court issued the temporary restraining order and followed sub subsequently by the writ of preliminary injunction uh, uh, Senator Trillanes uh, introduced a resolution in, 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 uh, in the Senate requesting or urging the Committee on uh, Committee on Justice and Human Rights of the Senate to conduct an investigation in aid of legislation to, to look into uh, the alleged uh, the alleged TRO for sale in the Court of Appeals and elsewhere. I, I'm, I'm quoting the, the resolution, uh, Your Honor, elsewhere and other alleged anomalies for the purpose of introducing remedial legislation. Now, uh, of course, this uh, this was published in the papers and. Uh, and uh, somehow, uh, as you said earlier, my name was mentioned. Um, if it, it was, of course, uh, it was, of course, a serious and unfounded uh, uh, allegations, and it hurt me, of course. Uh, but, uh, Mom, I, I just kept still. I kept still. My conscience was clear. Uh, our actuations were based on existing existing jurisprudence which all started in 1992 so you know I was a little bit I was confident that we will eventually be sustained uh, if this case is brought I said if this case is brought to the Supreme Court we will be sustained and so I kept still and I even prayed for him Meaning, you know, uh, I have deep faith in God, so uh, I also prayed for His enlightenment. Para ho lumambot naman yung puso niya at maintindihan ko anong anong pangyayari. And uh, the Court of Appeals eventually, uh, through the presiding justice. Uh, uh, called for the ethics committee, but it it has resulted in inhibitions of some of the members. I, I, I for reasons I do not know. So one member uh, after another inhibited until finally the presiding justice uh, Andres Reyes Jr. Uh, um, uh, formed a committee because the original ethics committee could not uh, function. So he invited some members and and uh, hopefully so there were some members of the Court of Appeals who accepted uh, the call of the presiding justice. Now, Mom, uh, to date, to date, no, no, uh, uh, 
comment, no, no complaints has been filed. Nor was there a or an order directing me to comment or to explain the the alleged uh, subject matter of the resolution. And in fact, ma'am, uh, there being no complaint, uh, I sought for many. I asked for clearances as, as required by the JBC and uh, clearances were issued to me by the office of the Ombudsman, uh, the NBI stating that uh, there are no pending cases, NBI and uh, uh, the integrated bar of the Philippines uh, that issued two, two certifications, one as, as a uh, a member of good standing and there being no pending case. So, and of course, I also obtained clearance from the police. And so, uh, for now, there is really no case. Probably no complaint. Probably there is really no evidence. There's no evidence, Mom. So that's why I, I'm not in privy to what the committee has done up to this time, except that no action has been taken. So, with the decision of the Supreme Court last November 10, uh, we all felt in the division, the sixth, former 6th division, that you know uh, we were all vindicated because no less than the Supreme Court said that the WPI which we issued was correct. It was correctly issued. So for now, my well, as I said, I continued to keep still, continue to pray for him, and I'm at peace. So I think that's about all, ma'am, uh, that I can say. Uh, and that was my only question. <laughs> so <laughs> with that, Justice, uh, uh, I wish you well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Attorney Cayosa. And now, please, Attorney Mejia. Um, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, that was also about the same question that I was going to more or less ask, and you have uh, uh, articulated very well your, your answer. And so I don't have any more question, and just wish you good luck. Just as well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Attorney Cayosa. And now, may I request Attorney Gibar. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, Justice. Good afternoon, uh, sir. Justice, I understand that you have been uh, interviewed many times before, several times before. So uh, I just have you a few questions to ask. Yes, sir. I noted in your personal uh, data sheet that uh, you are a member of the Knights of Columbus. You're also a lay minister and uh, a member of the Couples for Christ. So uh, I can conclude that uh, uh, you're a rather religious person. Um, yes, I am. Uh, in your opinion, uh, Justice, um, should a person without any spiritual belief or more specifically, a belief in God be even considered for nomination to a position like a Supreme Court Justice? Your Honor, there are established uh, qualifications for a particular position. Uh, as far as judgeship is concerned, uh, religiosity is not one of the requirements. For as long as a particular applicant has complied with the requirements, either even provided for by law or by the Constitution, then there is no reason why he or she can be uh, nominated and subsequently appointed. But religiosity can also be uh, taken into account because uh, I'm always of the opinion that aside from the qualities of competence, probity, uh, 
uh, integrity, uh, the matter of uh, a deep faith in God or shall I say the spirituality of a person can help. As I have mentioned in, in previous interviews, when a person is deeply religious and God-fearing, God-fearing, then it has a, you know, it has a tremendous effect on the individual. There is, it, it affects, you know, there is a transformation in him. It is, for me personally, my being uh, religious has actually been my shield and my strength. Like what happened last year, probably if, uh, if I did not have a deep faith in God, then probably I would have collapsed. As a matter of fact, my staff were even kidding me. Bakit? Meaning, why are you so composed? They say, why will I not be composed? You know? I have I have God on my side. Meaning, I always ask God to walk with me in everything that I do. Even in decision making, I pray. I pray especially in important cases. So, uh, as a matter of fact, we were deliberating this case, this important case last year. I prayed a lot for guidance. Even when I was a trial judge, I would always pray. It, it may not be, religiosity may not be a requirement, but it, it has a tremendous effect on the individual. That is, your, that is why, Your Honor, in the Court of Appeals, I've, you know, I've tried to uh, help. Uh, our personnel, our employees, and even justices and, and officers to, you know, to attend uh, uh, gatherings about values formation because I believe that this can help. It may not be, uh, it may not produce an overnight change, but at least it's a basic step towards, uh, you know, transforming a person, helping a person become a better person. So, Your Honor, I think uh, um, religiosity can be considered in addition to the existing uh, established uh, qualifications established by law and, and, and by the Constitution. It has a calming effect, Your Honor, and it has, uh, it has helped me a lot. And conversely, the lack of it should not be taken against any applicant. It should not be taken against uh, your honor. But, uh, because there is always a chance, uh, your honor, for this person. Initially, he may not have... He may not believe in God, or he may not have a strong faith in God, but, uh, you know, he, he can easily be probably touched by prayers and by his, you know, colleagues. Uh, and that is what is needed now, Your Honor. Uh, the judiciary has been under siege, under attack. But uh, I always have the mindset that... Uh, for as long as we continue to pray, I, forgive me for being so, uh, you know, forgive me for being so uh, empathic about, you know, uh, closeness to God. This is, this is what we need now. Uh, in my work, you know, uh, Your Honor, I hope uh, you will be patient to... <laughs> listen to my my experience when I was a trial judge uh, when I the first time that I was going to promulgate a decision imposing that sentence I could not sleep your honor but when I spoke to my father confessor he explained to me you know your job your position as a judge is a God given gift to you for as long as you are you know, legally certain. We have gone over the testimonies of witnesses and then the evidence. <clears throat> and you are morally certain based on existing uh, 
existing uh, guidelines or teachings of the church, then by all means. So from that time on, eh, you know, it wasn't really difficult for me anymore to to, to impose uh, uh, death sentence or life sentence. Although, you know, I don't really believe in the imposition of death penalty. But I, I believe that uh, deeply being a, a, a God-fearing person can go a long way in, in transforming a, a, a person, Your Honor. Justice, as a trial judge, you also handled family cases? Family cases, yes, Your Honor. Uh, involving an alman. Including legal separation? Yes, Your Honor. Marriage. Uh, did your spiritual beliefs in any way get or was factored? Was it ever factored? Factored in? Yes, in rendering a decision on the matter of uh, legal separation or annulment of marriage. Your Honor, I always base it, base my actuations, my decisions based on the law, based on the evidence. But somehow, uh, during uh, during pre-trial, during pre-trial, I use my my uh, uh, shall we say expertise. I don't know if you call it an expertise, but I use my knowledge you know, of marriage in helping the parties come together again, reconcile. Uh, sometimes I would even brag among friends that, you know, I had a high batting average for reconciliation, even the most impossible situations. Konting dasalango the Holy Spirit. I don't know, but uh, I was able to somehow. That is how religion would factor in. But on the matter of writing decisions, when the situation is really hopeless, that I could not do anything to, you know, to help them reconcile, then I go through the process of getting, uh, listening, uh, going to trial, and deciding on the basis of of the law and the evidence. Okay. Thank you very much, Justice. I have no further questions. Thank you, um, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Tony Guevara. Uh, may I request Justice Lagman? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. <coughs> As shown by the records, we have interviewed Justice Reyes for four times since 2009 in connection with this application for a slap in the Supreme Court. And we have... Uh, nominated him twice in 2011 and in 2014. May I correct? Uh, 2014. 2011, 2012. 2011. I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> 2011, 2012, and 2014. 2012 and 2014. It's not included in my record. <laughs> I was included in my record is the 2011 and 2014. But I was interviewed you in 2009, 2011, 2012, and 2014. Okay. And with that, and considering your answers to the questions propounded by the other members, I find no reason to further grill you on your qualifications. Thank you very much, Justice Reyes, and I wish you luck. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justice Lagman. Just a few questions. Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. I read the decision of the Supreme Court concerning your WPI. Yes, And at the time you issued it, you were correct. You relied heavily on the past presidents such as Pascual, Garcia, Governor Garcia Jr., Aguinaldo, Salalima. Salalima. And then the case reached the Supreme Court, and according to the Supreme Court, the doctrine of condonation has to be abandoned. Yes, ma'am. But the Supreme Court luckily did not say that you were wrong, that you were wrong in deciding the case uh, concerning uh, Mayor Dina Jr. But unfortunately, a the reasoning of the Supreme Court in abandoning it is that public offices and public trust, public officers are, are, should act uh, with honesty, integrity, etc. 
and so the Supreme Court has abandoned this uh, doctrine of condonation but the abandonment has been made prospectively yes, so I congratulate you on that because at the time you prepared or you wrote this uh, resolution two resolutions ma'am two resolutions TRO and WPI yes ma'am you were correct so congratulations and good luck thank you very much ma'am ah, I'm done yeah. oh <laughs> Thank you very much. The public interview is hereby adjourned.